Hello, this is Hakuda Bean, and today we are going to be reading some more of SCP-6500, The Path of the Cleric. If you like this, this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right into this. From the fishing village of Ine. The helicopter had dropped them off a man nearby field, close to the Sea of Japan. From there, Agent Tanaka called in a boat to take them to the fishing village. The village was built bordering the coast along the northern tip of the Itango Peninsula, uh, north of the old capital, Kyoto. Many of the buildings were of a traditional isle called Funea, with small built-in docks for boats serving as the first floor and living quarters above. Assure the bodies we treat with respect, he called over the roar of the boat's engine. Like I said before, we'll send them to the appropriate services to make sure their families are notified once they've been identified. Kaito nodded, holding his head out to show his eyes from the sun and out over or the water. Despite the late afternoon hour, the village was quiet. Normally, this would be when the men and women on fishing boats would be returning to clean their afternoon catches or working on their boats, but today, as the sun approached the glittering horizon, there was no activity. The boat slid into an empty space by a dock, and Kaito leapt onto the wooden structure. He made eye contact with Fumiko. Where are all the people, Agent? We've evacuated the villagers with a story concerning a possible terrorist plot. Where, then, are the defense forces and police one would expect in such a situation? Fumiko smiled and shrugged, then followed him onto the dock. She turned to look for, at the pilot in, of the small boat, dressed in similar combat gear as she, and nodded. As she turned away from the vessel, he sped off down the coast. She looked at Kaido. Don't worry, we'll have backup if we, if we need it. Kaito walked in between... Uh, in, in two of the funaya, uh, a two... Approach the nearest street. That will not be necessary. Fumiko snorted. A little overconfident, aren't you? Kaito turned to her and leaned on his Chakujo, his eyes as he, narrowing as he met her eyes. I have been defending my people from Yokai and Oni for all my adult life. Most of the time, I have been alone, so I would say I'm at the just about right level of confidence. She offered her hands in mock surrender and followed him towards the street between two of the t uh, houses. Tell me about these murders, he said over his shoulder. Over the last eight days, six people have died suddenly. Her tone belied very little horror as though she was reciting. Bite marks, tearing out the flesh like an animal was at the body. Fumiko ghost shuddered so heavily and shook her head. No, suffocation in each case. But there were no marks of strangulation or drowning. Were the victims found in their beds? I know what yokai that's about. I have not gotten an email back from the yokai site for narrating over their, their stuff for a video. I probably won't. No, although the deaths occurred at night, only few were found in their homes. The others were found on the street. No witnesses have come forward. It sounds like Yamaki Yamachichi, but not quite. What is that? Her tone was light, as if she didn't care about the subject at all. Which didn't mer which didn't make sense. This was why he'd been called here, was it not? A yokai that's ill of breath from sleeping people. But usually they live in the mountains, and when a victim is attacked, they die the next day. Could this be one of them? She asked. Yamachichi are exceedingly rare. Even when one is present in an area, it wouldn't hunt this frequently. How rare? I've only read about them in an old bestiary from the Edo, from the Edo period, Kaito sighed. He sought to fully refill up a water bottle from his death sack and drank for a moment before he spoke again. When was his most recent death? Several nights ago, in a home just up this street. Want to take a look? 
Katsu nodded and indicated she should lead the way. A few minutes later, she turned into one of the Funaya houses and opened the door, pushing past the police barrier. Kaito followed her up to the residential section of the house, removing his sandals at the entryway. Fumiko started to enter the residence, but Kaido stopped and looked down at her combat boots. No one lives here currently. It's not exactly expedient to remove these and put them back on. Then stay here, Kaito said. If you're going to go to Japan, you got to take off your shoes at the entrance. So I got air slip-ons. As he walked past her, she said, The body was found in the kitchen. Kaito nodded and passed through the entryway, sliding aside the traditional rice paper door. The floors were polished pine, smooth against his bare feet. The living room was first, small with an old TV sitting on a dresser. Then passed the modern bathroom and into the kitchen. Kaito could feel where the life had ended. The emanation came from the corner, where the resident had fallen and propped up against the wooden cabinet and a small washing machine. He clasped his hands and bowed, reciting a sutra. A noise at the window startled him, and he just managed to see a furry body slide off the windowsill and out of sight. Kaito turned and ran back to the entryway, slipping into his sandals and rushed out the door. Fumiko followed, several paces behind. What is it? she asked. Kaito shook his head and as he ran the corner into the street and just barely caught sight of movement, slipping between two houses a few dozen meters away. By the time he reached the alley, there was no sign of the thing. Fumiko caught up to him and covered his face with her assault rifle. Kaito put his hand on the weapon and pushed it down. It is gone. <sighs> Kaido walked to the end of the path as between the houses and looked out on the small, well-kept park. LED lights flickered on along the length of the street and in the park, illuminating the near neatly cut grass, and play areas for children. On the other side of the park was a forest covering a of rising hill. He stepped out into the street towards the park, but was struck in the back by something small and terribly dense. Kaito's face met the asphalt with a loud click, and the world went dark for a moment. As his vision started to clear, he tasted blood in his mouth. His head was dry as he turned to look at Fumiko and found Yokai crouching over her face. Her body supine. He could see the breath at the escape from her lips as he struggled to regain his feet. The image of the street swam in front of him, creating doubles of this the scene. Not direct through him and he gagged, only imagining a su shuddering cough when he tried to speak. He tasted blood in his mouth. She was going to die. Suddenly, three shots rang out and Yamagishi reeled back, collapsing to the ground. Fumiko gasped for breath. Moaning and set up, Kaito looked down the alleyway to see several Foundation soldiers approaching. The rifles extended. Kaito stood up, checked that Fumiko was breathing steadily, and forced her to stay seated with a hand on her shoulder. He turned to the nearest soldier and swept his legs out from under him with the Shakujo. He followed with the kick to the fallen soldier's solar plexus and extended the Shakujo out to etch next to the jaw, setting him strolling. The third soldier aimed his, his weapon and aimed at, at Kaito. Stand down! Fumiko shouted, hurrying to get between them. She held off her hand and drove Kaito while she turned to address the, the, shoulder, the soldier. Help them up and retreat back into the street. But now, Sergeant! Fumiko turned, turned back to Kaito, placing both hands on his chest as he started to push past her to follow the soldiers. Listen to me! She sat out into her, his face, causing him to pause. They were just protecting me! That's their job! Kaito brushed her hands away with a strength she clearly found unsurprising and turned back to Yamagi Yamachichi. Yokai was sh aching, brown red blood pouring from the three bullets and holes in its torso. It looked like a toddler sized possum, but slightly anthropomorphized. Its eyes were shockingly human blue. Kaito touched the beast's chest just in time for the breathing to stop. It was only acting on instinct. There's no malice here, she said. What were they supposed to do? Let me die? You would have reincarnated. It will not. 
He was silent for a few minutes as he crouched by the Amikichi. There is no prayer for yokai, no hells or dharmic cycle, just oblivion. Fumiko touched Kaido's shoulder. He looked up into her face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm merely frustrated by all this violence. Why do I feel so strong? I feel like I just had three shots of expression of a stress oh, and my breathing is in, even strained. Yama Yamachichi is interrupted from taking the breath from a person. They will not only die the next day, but I will have increased is not only not die the next day, but will have increased value and extend life. Or so it is said. Kaiser spoke softly, untying his cloth knapsack, unfolding it and laying it across his small furry body. He sat his water bottle on the ground and slipped his excess of food into the pouch on his belt. What would you have done? she asked, incapacitated, and vanished from the room. It was just a poor beast. A clapping of hands came from the tree line in slow applause. Kaito turned and saw Ten and Gu emerging from the trees beyond the park. Its clawed feet dug into the neat grass as it walked. Its black feathered wings were folded behind its back, and it carried a long spear made of black oily metal. It wore leather armor on its chest with steel rings sewn into the material. Very nice, the Tengu laughed in a shrill sound on the bird from its speak. Funeral rites for Yamachichi. Do you want to recite a sutra? There would be no point. Its spirit is gone to wherever yokai travel when they die. It has no anima to be reincarnated. No path to the fear lands. Ah, too bad. I watched out for the little thing. He was good company and will be missed. He was cooling rapidly. Six in this last few weeks. That's uncharacteristic. Were you spurring him on? I? No. Why would someone such as I want the deaths of random fishermen? The fairy devil was famished after so long away from your world. I don't even know what he was doing in this area. I do not believe you, Tengu-san. The Tengu shrugged as it continued its approach through the park. Are you calling me a liar, priest? Yes, your kind is all too fond of mischief, usually ending in the deaths of innocence. Innocence? Ha! What have these people done to you? The Tengu stopped at the edge of the park, a few meters of asphalt between them. He held his arms wide, the spear swung in a sweeping gesture to indicate the village. Oh, we get to hear some classic racism. They live, priest! They foul everything they touch. There is no room for us anymore. No stories told of our might. No game to be found in the forest. Just endless humans with their televisions and their cars. Corrupting the land. They are Kagare. Kaito gripped his shakucho in both hands, holding it across his body horizontally, as if to make a barrier. That doesn't mean they should die. Oh, poor agreeless priest! Do you be do you don't you believe in the wheel anymore? They'll be reincarnated, right? No harm done. Must we do this? Won't we leave this row in peace? I do not want more violence. The Tengu shrugged. The girl soldiers killed my friend. Blood is necessary to balance the insult.
Kato saw Fumiko bending down to pick up her rifle. He grabbed the Nofuda from his spell pouch and adhered it to the Chakutra with a spoken Katodama. She turned and met at his eyes, nodding. He indicated with a head bob that she should uh, fall back, but she shook her head. She sighed down the rifle and gasped. Kaito turned just in time to see the Tengu rushing down from the sky at the completion of an, an inhumanly high leap. He stepped to the side and raised his Chakutra to meet the oncoming spirit blast. A bell chimed with the impact, and again a bright light erupted from the tip of the Chakutra where the Fudo charm enveloped it. The spear thrust was shunted to the right and towards Umiko. Kaito started to call out a warning, but the agent was already spinning to avoid the thrust, just barely missing her face. Fumiko fired a burst from her rifle, but the Tengu spun its spear, deflecting the rounds into the road. The beaked mouth out of the yokai clicked several times, a chiding tsk tsk sound. The Tengu continued rotation of the spear, bringing the blunt and down in a blur towards the agent's skull. Kaito called out at a ring called Tadama, and the spear halt out was deflected into the body armor Fumiko wore, striking her between his shoulders and head. She groaned in pain and sprawled backwards against a Unyazuki, not quite losing her feet. <sighs> Enough, bird, Kaito shouted at the Tengu in Japanese. It is time for you to leave! He struck out. Out of the yokai's face with the shakutra, slipping past its guard and striking it on the side of the yellowish beak. There was utter flash, and the bird like yokai flew backwards onto its back on the yes, asphalt. It made a shrill cry of pain. Kaito followed with an overhead head blow on the Tengu's spear arm, hitting the wrist with a nauseating snapping sound. The yokai screamed and dropped the weapon. I hope you burn in all the hells, priest. I only want to see the world again. There will be no way to go home to soon. You send me to oblivion. Kaito stood over the Tengu with another banishing of Fudo charm in his hand. What do you mean? Quickly, before I beat you senseless. Magic fades. The realms wither. Soon there will be no home. We must come here. You are not welcome. Kaito said softly. Amoguchi Sama was right about you people. Who? Our patron, you ape! He supported our coming here again after so a long way for most of us. He warned us if he would never let the yokai return to Japan. Where is this man? The Tengu struck out with its good arm, but Kaito stepped aside and struck it with the shock. Kujo again. The light was different than before, but Tengu's credit and pain all the same. Answer me! When it spoke, Tengu's voice was low, contrasting its previously violent and jovial tone. Oh, you think I'll betray the only man who would understand our needs? Rot, priest. Simmer in the filth of your fellow humans. Do not look to the realms when your arts no longer work. Kaito stepped forward and placed banishing charm on Tengu's chest gently. A bell chimed in the empty street, and the yokai was gone, leaving only smoke in its place. It did not scream. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a good a, a place to call it. Well, that was some more of the Cleric's Path. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, I do know that the, sh the parts are a little bit shorter on this, this path. There's a completely valid reason. Mostly my computer is being annoying. And we will continue it tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!